Hey guys, it's Trent, and I'm back to talk about another image. I hope everyone's been okay. Uh, this actually is a part two um, of a question series from uh, Patreon Shot Whore Photography. I love that name, by the way. I'm laughing on the inside every time I say it. Um, he actually asked about another picture of Vivian before this with a snake, and then he chose two pictures, um, one of Christina and one of Vivian, to talk about. Um, I chose this one to go ahead and um, hit on because this actually is one of my more recent shoots um, in comparison to a lot of the photos that you'll see on the Flickr. This was actually done in December uh, 2016, and um, it's a maternity shoot for Viv. So, uh, you know, you can't do a lot of those uh, unless you really, you're really aiming for it. And uh, as a person who really doesn't have any interest in doing um, maternity photos, uh, this one's rather special to me because... It was a personal request from Viv herself, essentially a do this for me because I'm pregnant and I want it. So once again, uh, Shot Whore Photography asked me about this one. Let's talk about the technicalities, blah, blah, blah. Um, guys, these videos are still fairly new. And so I'm trying to find a structure for it. And I came up with something. Check this out. This is the hit list for every image valuation that I'm doing now, which is an introduction and a bunch of other things. So... Um, there is actually structure in this. Um, of course, if you guys notice, it's not like defined by do everything and you must say everything. There might be some things I skip or might be some things I expand on. But the main thing is I really want, uh, want these image evaluations to not just me like blowing a bunch of hot air out, but actually be making, it, making it worthwhile for you guys. Uh, so the structure is there. And so... I'm going to go ahead and, you know, go down this list during this image, image evaluation and, uh, we'll see how it goes for you guys. All right. Let me get this out of the way here. All right. So we talked about a little bit, a little history about this image, but I'll, I'll go ahead and say it again. I am not really in the market to take maternity shots, but one of the cool things is, you know, you become friends with a lot of the people that you do photos with, or you potentially can and life happens, you know, um, in an industry like modeling where 95% of the people you work with may be female, uh, who knows, you know, it varies from photographer to photographer. There's a chance a lot of them will get pregnant or some of them will get pregnant. Well, if they do, they might ask for maternity photos. So once again, it's not something I want to do, but it's interesting to, um, you know, to get it done for someone who really wants it done. The other thing too, is the idea of this shoot a little bit history on this one. Uh, you know, Viv's in a very, you know, it's a very different type of shoot than most maternity shots you may have seen uh, because there's a circus instrument, which is a little bubble that she's in, uh, that she was able to sit in. And the collaboration for this one is with her and me. The idea was definitely Vivian's and she wanted me to execute it because lighting a bubble is a lot more difficult than you would think it is. So before we go on, let me uh, let me say a little bit of a thank you to uh, thank you to Marilyn Chen uh, from Liquid Sky for letting us use her uh, facility, her studio. Uh, she's the one who actually uh, has this little bubble that um, Vivian was able to sit in. Vivian, of course, uh, thanks for getting pregnant. I guess so. Thanks to your husband too for uh, for the fertility and uh, you know asking me to take um, take this photo. Um, a little bit more about Vivian herself. Vivian and I have worked together for a long time. So if you guys are wondering like how, uh, how to book a model or so on, um, this one came from a long history of knowing each other, uh, Vivian and I. So, um, you know, once again, models you may work with, uh, they look, or they, they do modeling and then they get into relationships down the line, keep your relationship with them. Five years later, they get pregnant. They might ask you how to, how to do a maternity shoot for them. That's how, that's how it ends up going. All right, so let's see here. Let's talk about uh, let's talk about the idea itself. Once again, Viv and uh, Viv came up with the idea. She wants to do a maternity shoot. We did a basic one a few um, about a month beforehand, and then her baby bump got a little bit bigger. Uh, in the case of this one, she really wanted to be in the bubble. Um, so where I worked with her is I'm a big sci-fi fan, and in my head I was thinking more of like. Uh, you know, a big, I'm a big fan of Darren Aronofsky's The Fountain. And in it, there's Hugh Jackman in a big giant bubble, a traversing space. What's really cool is if you guys haven't seen that movie is it's very macro photography influenced. Um, you know, a lot of space scenes and stuff like that. Love it, but 
not to go off on a tangent on it, I really envisioned in my head, like, um, both a mixture of the fountain and also space, you know, space odyssey 2001, uh, with the baby just kind of, it's an encapsulation. It's a, uh, an inception of sorts of a baby, uh, inside Viv and Viv inside a capsule. Uh, that's what Viv and I worked on, but then also a space sort of element. And so about two years ago at party city or three years ago, I got a bubble machine. It's like 30 bucks and I haven't used it in like two years. So I was like really excited. I was like, Viv, I haven't used my bubble machine in two years. I, f I found the power support cord for it. I, I lost it. I'm going to bring it. We had no idea how it was going to look, but the reason why I mentioned that is lighting bubbles takes a little bit of technical know-how. So you guys will know that here. All right. So the, um, the idea was mostly like, Hey, what, what kind of shoots can, or what kind of shots can we get inside the bubble? Uh, Viv actually loves in the sense being naked. We talked about it in beforehand. Um, but in a artistic way and also in a way that, you know, you don't really, it's kind of timeless photo wise. If you have, if you have photos in jeans or anything like that, it doesn't look great when you're taking like, when you're going for this timeless motif. So the idea to be nude, that was Viv's idea. And I think it worked well in this one because, uh, you know, we tried some, uh, we tried some robes, we tried some clothing just to try different uh, ideas. And it really took away from her baby belly and from her form. All right, so lens usage, um, going a little bit further on this. I used a, um, I used the 70 to 200, going back to the, uh, the photo of Lisa that I talked about a few sessions ago, going to a higher millimeter length allows me to isolate the background. We, um, what we had here when we were working on it, and if you guys notice, I'm actually using a different drawing program because my other ones were having, uh, yeah, the drawn one really sucked. Um, we didn't have much, uh, we had a bar and we had this suspended there, but pretty much we had about 10. Whoa. What is this? I got to delete that. Nah, we had 10 feet left to right. And then we had about, I would say eight feet behind, uh, um, behind the, uh, the item that we're shooting or the, the circle bowl thing. And so dealing if you shot with a 35 millimeter or a 50 millimeter you're going to get a lot of the background you're going to get the lines back here so by me stepping back going further back and shooting at 135 to 200 and that's horrible handwriting there um it allowed me to go ahead and um isolate the subject into the crystal ball which or into the ball which uh save me a lot of work. And so stepping further back using a longer focal length helped me out a bunch there. So other technicalities when it comes to that, uh, are, you know, using that is, um, uh, zooming or stepping further back, zooming in. And let me see here. I'm trying to remember all the other ones. Oh, um, if you're doing studio photography, I have a 70 to 200 2.8. I love that lens, but it's heavy as hell. Uh, if you have the budget for it, or if you're ever wondering, can you get a 70 to 200 F4, uh, 70 to 200 F4 for studio photography is amazing. And also a lot lighter, something, uh, something horrible is I have the 70 to 200 2.8. I barely use it. Maybe throughout the year, if I check to see what lens I use the most by the end of, uh, by the end of the year. 5% of my photos are with the 70 to 200, despite how great of a lens it is because of its weight. All right. So moving forward, uh, let's talk about a little bit about the lighting. All right. So this is going to be a little bit more, uh, a little bit more interesting, uh, concerning lighting, getting a gridded light was important because we didn't have too much of a background or since the, whoa, let me see here. Since the background was relatively close to the, uh, the bowl, I couldn't use a super wide softbox without it lighting the background. Um, and even with a grid, it was still lighting this portion. I wanted it straight black, but I also really wanted that, uh, kind of wanted it sort of that, if you look at the shot, the well-defined shadows and so forth. So going back to what we've talked about in the last few videos, the smaller light source creates a more defined shadow. So the light that we used on Viv, 
was a straight seven inch reflector with a 30 degree um 30 degree grid which dropped the light right on um right on her let me see if i can go ahead and delete all this do, 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 do. I, this i should have paid attention to this program before i used it but oh well do, do, do. go ahead and delete that but going back to it that uh gridded light allowed me to have control over it but also did create harsher shadows but it was kind of an aesthetic i was going for another issue with using a bigger light so you, just so you guys know is that uh the surface on the the bulb is completely reflective the bigger the light source the more prominent any uh, reflections were and it really showed in the image and it was difficult to work with by using a smaller uh, a light source it was a lot easier to work with a uh, to work with this glass ball or with this uh, sorry whatever material it is translucent ball behind viv is another studio strobe um with a 10 degree grid the 10 degree okay so let's do a top down view so here's the subject here's the camera a little bit further than that my cameras look so horrible <laughs> but uh there's another light behind viv so we have one light here and we have another light behind viv and so this is on a 10 degree grid and pretty much just right on her body level and so that's just projecting into the back of the um of the round i don't even know what it's called anymore i'm just call i'm gonna call it circle and uh or the round ball and just go ahead and go from there guys and it creates that background um background kicker light uh that shows up onto the uh the ball here and so that if you guys notice it creates the highlights in um let me see here so there creates the, these beautiful highlights behind her in kicker light but also the only problem is it all of this right here all of this nasty stuff that's uh let me see there you go all of that nasty stuff there is unfortunately really pronounced with that and so the ball is kind of a little bit scuffed that's what we had to deal with but fortunately the aesthetic looks good on it but it's one of those things where lighting the background really really pronounced that all right so going back to it one of the issues that does occur when it comes to this is when you're blowing when you're shooting bubbles and there's a bubble machine going over here so there's a little bubble machine and it's shooting bubbles around the problem with the bubbles is the only light that's really hitting it uh that's being picked up by the camera is on the side there um if i could do one more thing i wish i could have done was i didn't bring enough lights i would have added another light here just to hit the bubbles because what you see in this picture is one smaller light source reflecting off the the bubbles and it's not creating this bubble like heavy bubble inception or you know saturation that i wanted and so there is a couple other shots that are in this series where the bubbles are more pronounced and that's because i moved the position of light and those are kind of the ones i want yes i could have added it in post but uh, kind of a lazy bastard guy so i didn't i didn't do it and so that's one of the challenges that you have to deal with when it comes to lighting something like this is the bubbles were there and there was a there was a shit ton of bubbles but my lighting wasn't the best way for me to go ahead and show more of those bubbles i would have added one more uh, using another or using a nice lens that tunnels into your subject allows me to not get that light oh uh, another thing i would have done too is maybe gridded just a hot shoe flash instead of uh, so on but i didn't bring enough to do all of that you know the other thing too is this was about an hour hour and a half into the shoot already and so we were trying to just get what we can before uh viv got too tired out because you know it was it was difficult work getting up there you know positioning yourself you're not sitting exactly in the most comfortable position and so viv was a trooper all right so let's go and talk about the post processing that that was done i have a i have a lightroom um i have a lightroom preset that's heavy on uh, black and whites and so 
the uh it's one of those black and white presets that you know just hits the highlights and the shadows that i like so i i use that um i'm gonna go ahead and say this i'm actually gonna save all my presets and for patrons of certain levels you guys will have access to it um it's just one of those things where uh you know you guys can uh pay what you want for it but we'll figure out uh, we'll figure out you know how you guys can ask questions then and see if you like it or not but yeah, nonetheless there is some uh there is some tucking into um mostly over here i'll point it out right there uh there's some liquify right there in photoshop you guys can see the effect uh fortunately with the warping that's already being done the warping that's already being done by the the ball the, it actually it shows or where it minimizes the liquify like how much you can notice liquify so that was done there all right so the last thing that uh is going to be hit is you know what i would have done differently um uh, mentioned it before lighting you know lighting the bubbles so they're a little bit more pronounced since the bubbles came also from one direction it's heavier on the right side which you guys can see in the image um using post i could probably add a little bit more just to finalize the image but if i had a choice i would either reposition the bubble machine to be a little bit higher and let it drop down or potentially get another bubble machine because they're so cheap and i do like the effect and let the bubbles come from uh this way and you know go ahead and go go there um, add more bubbles in another you know another thing i would have done differently is go ahead and do the post to remove uh the suspension mechanism on top to make it look more um just like a you know a sitting bubble there um ideally if i had a bigger budget in the future this is one of those things where i would just purchase one of these balls straight you know straight forward and hang it and use it for a shoot unfortunately i don't know what the price is but it's fairly expensive it's specialized and i'm extremely thankful to maryland for letting us use it so i don't i mean the condition of this one wasn't the worst on a lot of the uh a lot of the marks you see in the back is actually bubbles that have hit the the ball beforehand and so um you know it's not the worst thing in the world but if i had an, an, you know a huge budget those are some of the few things that i would do I was actually very happy with this shoot uh so what would i do different not much because the shoot wasn't for me uh, i loved it but it was actually for a dear friend viv who really really wanted me there uh, she believes in my work she's believed in it for a long time and i'm the person that she wants for her maternity shoots we got another one coming up where we're actually going ahead and kind of emulate photos that we've done before with her and her husband nate so it's just one of those things where I look at this photo and there's a few things yeah i would have done it a little bit different here or there but when i hear her talking about it and how happy she is it's easy for me to say you know what i'm happy with it that's that's the thing uh what i do like about it is i don't really do maternity shoots so it's a double layer of like unique for me because a i don't think you see a lot of maternity shoots like this but b you know on my end it's it's something that i don't do very often uh, you know the the subject is extremely happy with it and we were both able to explore kind of not just uh our typical you know model photographer relationship but you know work together as artists also to get something done all right guys um i hope that answers some questions um you know i really actually enjoyed doing this i'm hoping to find more structure to it and to give more technical information but once again this is all new so we always end it patreon.com guys big thank you i'm not going to be long-winded about this one please support you know please contribute a lot of you guys already have if you have before hey please do some more again also if you guys buy anything photography related use my amazon link if you don't use anyone else's it doesn't cost you anything we get a nice nice kickback and contribution and it all helps if you guys notice these videos are just being put up there you know and I, I would love to make as long as it's appropriate make it public but also make very special videos um for the people who have contributed more who really want targeted uh education and so forth i'm really looking forward to those videos where people ask for maybe you know studio lighting lessons and so on because i still have my years and years and years of information and slideshow or slides that I've saved up that I'm ready to go ahead and uh you know show to you guys. But nonetheless, take care guys. Um 
have a good one and i can't uh, i'm looking forward to in the next one guys